Hello all my crafty friends. I'm making an elegantly designed tea box today. I picked out some gorgeous rice papers that blend together beautifully. And if you've never done this before, let's play with some casting resin today. Very different from its cousin epoxy resin. It sets up in 10 minutes. So if you're ready, let's make a mess. I'm going to turn this plain wooden box into an elegant tea storage box. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all the hardware so it doesn't get in my way while I'm painting and decoupaging. This little box holds about 30 tea bags. Some of the edges are rough, so I'm sanding them with my little hand sander to smooth everything out and get it ready for painting. I'm not going to put the front latch back on. I'm using a cute little handle instead. So I'm filling the holes. I'm using texture paste, which is available at my favorite place, decoupagenapkins.com. Actually, almost all the supplies I'm using today came from there. They have become my favorite place to order craft supplies, and I'm going to tell you all about them in a little bit. I painted the entire box inside and out with a vintage white. I had to do it in sections at a time and let it dry before I could continue. I'm going to be decoupaging some rice papers on the box, so I need a light background. A light background will make the colors in your paper look vibrant. A dark background will muddy up the colors in your rice paper. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you are all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. Isn't this rice paper beautiful? This paper and the other one I'll be using both came from decoupagenapkins.com. I'm using a water brush to separate my picture from the rest of the paper. The water makes the rice paper easier to tear. I'm spraying the paper with some water. When the rice paper is wet, it becomes pliable and easier to work with. It also helps the glue to penetrate the paper for a better hold. I'm using Polyvine Decorator's Varnish as my decoupage glue. It's far superior to Mod Podge and is also available at decoupagenapkins.com. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And why not share this with a friend? Thanks for doing that. Once I've laid the picture in place, I'm rubbing it with a piece of plastic to smooth out any bubbles or wrinkles. Then I'm giving it a coat of the polyvine. It's very important to lay down a piece of plastic before smoothing your rice paper. You can press harder to remove the bubbles. If you don't use plastic, you risk tearing your paper. I just cut up a Ziploc bag. After the varnish dried, I sanded the edges with some sandpaper to remove the excess paper. The sandpaper gives you a nice clean cut edge. This rice paper is going on the sides of the bottom of the box. The green matches perfectly with the paper I put on the top. I'm going to do all the same steps. I tore it to size, added the polyvine to the sides of the box, sprayed the paper with water, and laid it on the box. I smoothed it out with the plastic again, and then added another coat of polyvine. I had to do this in sections and let it dry. I did two sides at a time. DecoupageNapkins.com has such a great selection of rice papers as well as napkins that you can purchase one at a time. Rub-on transfers, molds, modeling clay, stencils, stamps, scrapbook paper, and much more. Over 6,500 products. They carry three lines of paint. Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint, clay mud paint, and pentart paints in a wide range of colors. 
They are wonderful to work with and send out their orders fast. They offer several automatic discounts when checking out on orders over $50, $75, and $125. Subscribe to their newsletter by entering your email address and you'll receive 10% off your next order. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave you some links in my description box below. After the first two sides dried, I sanded off the excess paper and was able to glue down the next two sides. When that dries, I'll sand off the excess paper there as well. All the products and tools I use and recommend in my videos have been tested by me. I won't suggest something that I haven't used myself. Each product will be listed in my description box below and will have a blue link to make it easy for you to find. Any of the links I provide are safe for you to click on. I'm going to put some of these smaller images here and there on the box. So I'm separating them and removing the excess paper from around each image. I added the teacup and a rose to the inside of the lid. I added the sign and rose to the inside of the bottom of the box. And a crown to the outside bottom. I'm using some painter's tape to mask off the feet on the bottom of this box. I'm going to add some gold foil to the four of them. I'll start by brushing on transfer gel glue on the area of the feet. This goes on white and dries clear. It remains sticky after it's dry so the foil will grab onto it. I'm removing the tape while the glue is still wet and I'll let that dry for about 30 minutes. The glue is dry now. It's clear and sticky, so it's time to add the gold foil. All you do is lay the foil down on top of the glue, give it a gentle rub, and the foil is removed from the sheet and adheres to the glue. It's such a beautifully elegant touch to any project. This gorgeous foil and transfer gel glue are both available at my favorite place, decoupagenapkins.com and the foil is available in many different colors. I've had this stencil in my stash for so long I don't even remember where I got it but I love the tiny Fleur de Lis. I'm going to add them around the perimeter of the lid. I sprayed the stencil with a repositionable adhesive spray made for stencils. This keeps the transfer gel from bleeding under the stencil. You'll get nice clean lines this way. I'm laying down the stencil and adding the transfer gel glue with a palette knife. This will create a raised embellishment. I'll let that dry for a few hours until it's clear and sticky. I have a tutorial on how to use stencils with no bleeding. If you'd like to check that out, there's a link in the upper right hand corner. I'll also leave you a link in my description box below. The repositionable stencil spray is available at decoupagenapkins.com. Now I'm adding the gold foil to my tiny fleur de lis. Here's a tidbit of information that I thought was very interesting, so I thought I'd share it with you. The fleur de lis is based on the shape of a lily. In French, fleur de lis means lily flower or flower of the iris. It's been used for centuries to represent a vast variety of things, including royalty, French culture heritage, Christianity, light, defense, and female virtue.
I'm going to add a small gold detail on the top of the lid on all four corners. I sprayed this stencil with adhesive just like the other one. I taped off a small corner of this mandala and I'll add the transfer gel glue with my palette knife. I'll let it dry and then add the gold foil. I'm working on some great spring projects for the upcoming weeks. I'll be doing some decoupage, 3D air dry clay, and mixed media canvases. I am going to do a series of reverse decoupage clear glass plates with some really different and fun techniques on each one. You'll want to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. I'm adding a vintage look by using some antiquing paste by Pentart on all the edges on the lid and bottom of the box. It looks too new, so I need to dirty it up a little bit and make it look old. I'm using my finger to rub it on all the edges and a brush to get into all the tight corners inside the box. This antique paste comes in seven different colors and I'm using umber, which is a dark brown. And you can find this product at decoupagenapkins.com. My friends over there have such an amazing online store. They carry over 7,000 products. You can find just about anything you're looking for to make your project. Okay, I love gold, so I'm adding a tiny bit of gold antique right on top of the brown. It gives it a little bit of shimmer, and you guys know that I love shimmer. I'm giving the entire outside of the box a coat of Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. This product works well as a decoupage glue and a varnish. Since my tea box will be in a kitchen, this formula is a great choice for varnish. It's highly water and heat resistant. It's also UV resistant, so you don't need to worry if your project is basking in the sunlight. I'll let this dry while we start playing with some casting resin. If you've never used casting resin, you're in for some fun. There are two parts. You mix equal amounts of each one. The kit comes with two little measuring cups and I just poured the same amount in each one of them. I added them both to a silicone cup. You need to mix it quickly. It looks streaky at first, but once it turns completely clear, you're ready to go. You only have about two or three minutes to get it into your mold because it starts setting up rather fast. I poured it into my mold and moved it around with a pin tool to make sure it went in all the little nooks and crannies. This also brought any air bubbles to the surface. I wiped off some of the excess with a popsicle stick. Now all you need to do is let it set for about 10 minutes and voila! It's ready when it turns solid white. There are no fumes, but I did wear gloves because it said it was a skin irritant. For safety reasons, make sure you read all the cautions on the box. In this clip, you can see it's starting to turn white. Casting resin is so easy to remove from the mold and it captures so much more of the detail than clay does. I'm loosening the mold around it and then it'll just pop right out. When you first remove it from the mold, it's very soft and pliable, which is perfect if you intend to put this on a curved object like a mason jar. Once it sets for 24 hours, it hardens up. But if you need to soften it up again, just give it a few minutes with a blow dryer. I'm a total fan of this product. I'll be using it a lot more in my projects. You can find this product at decoupagenapkins.com. 
If there's any dried residue around your casting, you can remove it with tweezers or a pair of scissors. Then you'll have some nice clean edges and ready for paint. You can treat your castings just like you would if they were clay. They're a lot more durable than clay, especially if you use a delicate mold. You won't have trouble with anything snapping off. I'm painting all my little embellishments with gold paint. I'll let that dry for about 45 minutes, then I'll put a coat of my satin polyvine varnish to prepare them for antiquing. And I'll let the varnish dry for about 45 minutes as well. If you'd like to be notified anytime I upload a new video, click the bell. I'm antiquing them with the Pentart Antiquing Paste in Umber, which is a dark brown. I'm putting it on with a brush so I can get into all the little nooks and crannies. Then I'll wipe it off the surface and it will stay just in the nooks and crannies, giving it a vintage look. The antiquing medium makes them look so pretty, but now I'm going to jazz them up a little more by adding some gold foil. I'm using a sponge to get some of the foil adhesive on just the surface of each embellishment. I'll let it dry for about 30 minutes until the glue turns clear and sticky. I'm going to rub the gold foil on the embellishments just like I did on the box. And that just gives them a little bit of glitz and looks so pretty. So, are you a tea drinker or a coffee drinker? Let me know in the comments. It'll be fun to see just how many tea drinkers there are out there. I've been a tea drinker since I was a child. I absolutely love all the herbal teas. I'm actually like a coffee drinker, but with tea instead. After the foil, I gave all the embellishments a coat of polyvine heavy duty wood varnish and let them dry for about 30 minutes. Now comes the time I love the most, putting everything together. On the inside of the lid, I'm gluing the little fans, one in each corner. I'm using a Shore Bonder cordless glue gun. I absolutely love this glue gun. It's so nice to work without fighting a cord that's in your way all the time. I have this listed in my favorite tools section in my description box below in case you want to check it out. Then I antiqued around each of the fans. I let it dry for about 30 minutes and then gave it two coats of the heavy duty wood varnish and let it dry 30 minutes between coats. That gave it such a nice satin shine. I'm gluing the beautiful scrolls two in each corner on the outside of the bottom of the box. Let me know what you think about this project. I'd love to hear from you. I just can't wait to fill it up with tea and put it in my kitchen. I painted this cute little handle to match all the other embellishments, including the gold foil. I'm gluing it to the lid in the center. I'm using wood glue and just a dot of hot glue to hold it in place while the wood glue dries. There's a little bit of an edge around the top of the box. I glued a bronze colored chain right in that little divot around the entire box. 
I had to do one side at a time because the chain didn't bend well around the corners. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.